What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Powered by Primus and in today's video I'm going to be revealing some cards that I got to design for the Arcs Wave 1 which is currently our first unofficial set for the Transformers TCG. I'll also be going in depth with some of those design choices, why I made some of them, as well as giving you guys a little bit of notes throughout the entire process to better help you guys understand why some of the design choices have been the way that they are. Now there are a lot of cards that are coming out with the Arc Wave 1 and you guys are only going to be seeing the cards that I did in in fact, get to put my input on. Now, there are a lot of other cards that are going to be coming out with the Arcs Waves 1, obviously, and those content creators may go into their different ways of being able to go into their design spaces. So, obviously, I'll only be covering the cards that I know about since I was the one that did design them. Now, I know Wes, also from Team Primus here, did get to design a lot of cards, so you guys are going to be seeing more of these as well. I'm probably going to turn this into a three-part series, seeing as how there are that many cards that we did get to work on. So, obviously, we'll be breaking them down so it's not a 10-hour video. It'll just come down to a few different videos going a little more in depth with each one to again better help you guys understand why we made some of the choices that we made. Now, if you guys do want to get in on watching everything that as it does get spoiled, as everything does come out for the Arc Wave 1, then I highly suggest that you guys go check out our Arc Facebook page. We recently did go over 500 members, and obviously we want to keep pushing that. You guys will be able to find everything on there from other people jumping in on conversations, gameplay, video, reveals, all of that good jazz, so I'll make sure I put that in the description box below. Now, the first card we're going to be talking about here is going to be Scout the Area. Now, this is a stratagem for Trypticon Assault Base, and it does say your deck can have up to two extra stars of white cards in your deck, which means you do get to go over the 25 star limit. So if you are rocking the 24, which is obviously going to be Trypticon, this would give you your 25th star, and then this allows you two additional white stars. It does say once per game at the start of your turn, you may deploy a character from under Trypticon Assault Base to the battlefield if you do, you flip this. Now, when it comes down to designing, there's a few things that you have to make sure that you do. One of those things that we wanted to make sure we did was that we followed Wizard's Skeleton that it did put out with all of its other cards. There was nothing we wanted to reinvent the wheel on. We really wanted just to make sure that we followed a lot of those base guidelines when it came to design. The next thing we wanted to do with when it comes to characters that needed buffs or characters that already existed was to make them playable, to give them what they needed, not necessarily what we wanted. And I think this is a big difference when it comes to talking about design, is a lot of people see a character that they really, really like and tend to just go way too far in the design process with giving them what they want versus what the character needs just to be competitive or even just more playable. Now we went through quite a bit of different iterations with this card. Originally it was just to let us start with one of uh, Trypticon's cards to deploy in hand and it just wasn't getting the job done. There's a huge difference when it comes to being able to play an action that lets you deploy a character or something like Metroplex where you could potentially have 12 cards in your deck currently which are in the game that you can use to get free flips on your Metroplex to be able to deploy. And again the difference here with Trypticon is the fact that if he doesn't get to deploy a character in his first turn, definitely a second turn and then you automatically are just going to lose the game. He doesn't have enough to be able to really fight to be able to get to the later stages of the game unless he has the little characters to chomp on or if your opponent gets to attack into those characters, again, leaving Trypticon with a little more health. Now this goes back to my part when it comes to design, talking about what does a character need versus what does a character want. We obviously want to win the game, but how do we get to that kind of a point? And the thing is that the character needs is a more specific way, a more reliable way to be able to deploy the characters. Starting with the actions in hand, we're totally fine. However, there are lots of characters like Chrome Dome and some other battle cards, Shockwave, that really do a lot of hand disruption. So if you were to happen to lose one of those cards early game specifically, then you're in the exact same boat. And again, then we're not really trying to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. So the next thing was a stratagem that gave us the ability to be able to deploy. I worked with Eric and Kevin, who are both big Trypticon players as well as myself, to really trying to chat about what it takes to be able to deploy a character. And we did end up coming with this to where it allows you to be able to use it if you need it. It's at the start of your turn, you get to choose if you need to use this ability to deploy a character. Now, if you happen to have a battle card in your hand and don't want to use this right away, then that is totally fine. Use the battle card if you want and you're in a really good spot. You can use this for a later deploy when you don't have the battle card. However, even if you have an action that you really need to play on this turn to really start to give you that momentum, you can use the stratagem to then deploy a character and you still have access 
to your action and a transform in your turn, which can be really relevant seeing as how uh, Triptychon really wants to be flipping to chop on his characters if he needs to for health, damage, whatever the case is. And then finally, opening the door for those double white battle icons means that we are still allowing Relentless Invasion to be played with Triptychon because I know a lot of people really want to play with it. I definitely want to play with it. However, running something like Villainous Spotlight before to get two Relentless Invasions did seem like a really good idea to be able to get those. However, if you're not deploying and those characters aren't getting KO'd, then the Relentless Invasions aren't doing anything for you anyways. And I will tell you, I've also played a few different versions of this where I use Leap of Faith as my additional White Star cards versus Relentless Invasions, and it was really, really fun. Now the next ones that we're going to talk about here is the Military Patrol. Now this was a new patrol that I really wanted to get into the game. I thought it'd be really fun to introduce some of these characters just because I really wanted to hit some specific star costs as well as some specific mechanics. Now the patrols were brought in with Siege and they ended up being really, really cool. Two of them getting far more play than others. So it was definitely one thing I wanted to be able to create was another patrol list that could actually get play. Now again, this is another thing that'll come down to design where it's like, oh, well, these cards seem really strong. Well, they kind of have to be to make sure that they get play or they have to be interesting enough to make sure that they get play or else you just end up keep playing the Airstrike Patrol because they're better. So when it comes down to it, you have to try to find a different way for to make a card valuable for someone to want to try to play the character or even have a different list where these characters make more sense for them versus Airstrike Patrol or the Off-Road Patrol making sense in those other lists. This is the first thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to Bomb Shock is that he is going to be a leader, tank, ranged, and five stars. Now, this is really, really important for me to be able to hit this list. I am a huge tank player. Doesn't mean, obviously, I'm just going to make them fantastic for no reason. However, it does really allow to be able to open some wider teams for tanks to be able to get access to some pretty cool stuff for them. And he does have a stealth while in alt mode. Now, I did keep his stats, obviously, all of their stats very, very close to what Wizards of the Coast did put down for all of their patrols. Again, it only makes sense to really follow that skeleton that they put in place. And then I did make a few adjustments, obviously, like when it comes to Bomb Shock being the leader and being a tank, he should have more defense in one mode than obviously while he does have in another mode. Now, the next thing is if you don't know anything about the military patrol, they are very interesting, they are very fun, they are very aggressive, and they are very powerful characters. So I figured that that had to obviously be brought over into their effects as well. Now, Bombshock does say that each of your military patrol does have plus two attack. Now, that does include himself because he is a military patrol. So when he does swing while he is in alt mode, he does have five attack as well as obviously all the other ones getting in with their plus two attack. Now, you may again talk about about how this is pretty strong, but if you look at something like the Airstrike Patrol, it does have when one of the other ones attacks and you flip a green battle icon, it gets plus two, plus one, so it can also even help on defense while still matching the plus two. Granted, you still have to flip a green battle icon, but when you have bold 50, you're flipping a green battle icon anyway. And then we're going to flip over to his other mode where he is going to maintain ranged and leader. He is now 381 versus 382. So we're just going to be able to just keep that same base attack. We are going to lose a bit of defense. And then we are also losing the stealth. And then it does say this gets plus one, plus one for each military patrol in your KO area. Again, following the same suit as all of the other patrol leaders. The next one coming in here is going to be Drop Shot, the Relentless Soldier. Now, he is going to be a truck and melee, which is really, really exciting. That's something about this list that's pretty all over the board, is that you have tons and tons of traits. I mean, we've got trucks, tanks, helicopters. It is really exciting, not to mention having specialist, melee, and ranged. That's right, get out those wedge formations again. But we have a really, really cool, diverse team that you can go for here, doing quite a bit of different stuff. Get out those four-wheel drives, get out those field communicators. There's a lot of stuff that you can really explore with a lot of these characters. Now, drop shot coming in here. Again, all of these alt modes going to have stealth while they are untapped, meaning once they are tapped, you can obviously go for them. And then while we flip over to drop shots alt mode, he does get access to reckless charge. You get to tap him, scrap an orange card from your hand, and then one of your characters gets plus four until end of turn. And at the end of turn, you deal three damage to that attacking character. Now, this is a very interesting concept because the one thing that I wanted to do differently with these guys versus what Airstrike does is Airstrike Patrol attacks so often and they do such a consistent strong number of damage I wanted to try to push the little bit of limits to that however having options with your little characters to actually use their tap abilities if you look at all of the other um patrol characters, most of them never use their tap abilities, their scrap abilities. We did obviously use Fix It, still use Fix It for a couple of different combo decks, whether you're running, you know, Cosmos or Wave 1 Shockwave, but you didn't really ever use any of their tap abilities, so I wanted these ones to actually be relevant. 
The only next thing about a lot of these tap abilities is that they are already battle cards that are within the game. So you obviously have to look through the pool that you're trying to go through. And this was the one that I decided to go on for this. Again, all of these characters are really aggressive. They're all trying to vibe for their leader of their little military patrol clan. It's just kind of their backstory. So I figured they all need to have some of that aggressive trying to be the stars of the show. And this is a really good card to put on there. Now the next character coming in here is going to be Tracer Ambitious Scout. Again, we're going to go through all of the military patrol characters. Now he is going to be a helicopter and a specialist. And if you do notice, he is four stars. And this was definitely intended, obviously, for to follow up the same star count as going for the other patrol characters. But this is another helicopter that is going to be relevant for you to be able to play with Tidal Wave. We do now have two helicopters coming in with our wave that are going to be played with Tidal Wave. And I do love playing Tracer in that list. Now again, stealth mode while in alt, and then does have 371 flipping over into bot mode. We are going to be still specialist. Again, really nice. Get out the field communicators. 370, and then it does say tap, scrap an orange card from your hand. You get to scrap the top card of your deck. If it's an upgrade, you may play it. So this is going to be a scrounge effect that you can go ahead and use whenever you feel like it. Obviously, if you have a way to set up the top of your deck, incoming transmission is always a really good one. Draw two cards, you get to put one on top of your deck, and then boom, you get to tap, scrap another orange, and then you get to play that upgrade from the top so you can potentially be getting two upgrades from the top of your deck uh or well essentially you've been playing your normal upgrade for the turn and then getting a free one off the top of the deck again really really cool especially if you want to stack some pretty awesome attacks or even just some really cool swings you can really really go for it and the last one coming in is going to be Growl, the Intimidating Thug, who's also going to be a truck melee while in alt mode, having 371 coming in as a four-star truck. Again, a really nice star count to be able to do some stuff with trucks specifically. Four-wheel drives, always a big fan of doing a lot of fun things like that. Team-up tactics can do some cool things. This does have stealth, again, while untapped. And then when we flip over to his bot, bot mode, we are still going to pick up the melee ability, 370. And then it does say tap, scrap an orange card from your hand, one of your characters gets both three until end of turn now again these characters are going to be getting beaten around if you are running heavy orange they're usually going to do a lot like the airstrike patrol and you know really survive probably one swing or even just go down to one swing and they are going to be out so again i really wanted to maximize if we wanted to go for these tap abilities that you could go for them and actually have some type of a relevant thing with them and again scrapping those and getting access to a supercharge on hand is a pretty nice effect it also may seem very obvious to instantly jump into a heavy orange list with these characters. However, I will tell you that the list that I've been very successful with playing them is a mixed list. Now, I've been a huge proponent for mixed lists for a really long time, really trying to tell people to push. You do not have to just build straight orange. You do not have to build just straight blue. And you can get away with running these really awesome mixed lists. And these characters are fantastic in a mixed list. I'm not going to give you guys any types of lists. Obviously, I want you guys to go out there and explore them for yourselves. But believe me when I tell you don't just lock them into solid orange now the next two coming in are going to be mini cassettes we did want to do one autobot one decepticon we actually have two decepticon mini cassettes that are going to be coming out with this wave to really give a lot of new looks to the sound wave versus blaster uh, theme deck that you could have and deploying these mini cassettes is a really really fun and we wanted to really really give some new ones that are going to just really shake things up with the way that people currently play those or just again just have different options to be able to play so it's not so mainstream for what you are currently doing for the characters. Now the Autobot one coming in here is going to be Rewind the Data Collector. Now again, all these are going to be mini cassettes. You are going to be playing them with the Blaster versus Soundwave uh, characters that can deploy them. Now we did keep all of their stats across the exact same. One thing that Matt Smith specifically said when he did design them was that he wanted every single character to have the exact same stats and we managed to mirror those obviously all throughout all of ours. So you're going to see 091 in alt modes and 391 in bot modes. Now, Rewind while in alt mode it does have a stealth, and this is for tapped versus untapped. It is always going to be there and does have a really fun ability. It says when you flip to this mode, return a card at random from your scrap pile to your hand. Now, one thing that's really cool about Rewind as a character is that he has the ability to maintain every bit of information. However, when you get that information is going to be completely random. Sometimes you'll ask for one thing specifically, and he'll give you a completely different thing. And like three hours later, then he'll end up giving you the information 
information that you were looking for originally. So it was a really, really fun thing for me to be able to put on here that you get to return a card at random from your scrap pile to your hand. You have no idea what it's going to be. Your opponent has no idea what it's going to be. Obviously, you just shuffle your scrap pile, don't look, go and grab a card, roll a die, however you want to come up with getting a card at random from there. So it could lead to some pretty intense turns where you end up getting back some like really cool, powerful card, or maybe just getting back a double pip card that you really don't want in your hand. Now when it comes to talking about Rewind's bot mode, he is obviously going to be that 391 that we discussed and is a specialist. So again, Field Communicator gonna be a really fun card here, multi-tool, really fun card here. And it does say that after you flip battle cards for this character's attack and before the defense flips, you may play a black utility that you flipped. Now this is a really cool effect because you don't have to specifically play it onto Rewind, you can play it onto any of your characters that you do have. You just have to obviously make sure that it is a black utility and there are all a lot of those cards right now that are getting a lot of play so again could be a really fun thing for you to be able to do whether you're getting the grenade to be able to put on yourself for a defensive you know your opponent goes back into you and you blow up or whether you're getting the plus three health card there is quite a bit of options that you can really go for and it was something that we wanted to maximize with this because there are a lot of the other characters that you can play do have access to playing you know blue weapons white armor so we wanted to follow that same suit up with a black utility now the next thing that I didn't really talk about with that is that we really wanted these characters to obviously fit the same archetype that they're getting a lot of play in. I know that I played and uh, got Orange Black Blaster around a lot more, so obviously I really wanted to fit the Rewind into the Orange Black version. You could just run it as basic stuff as well. Obviously it's really fun in that version. And then Rumble's gonna obviously go into a blue version that people are really running with Soundwave just because that just makes the most sense for that character. Now Rumble coming in here is the Demolition Expert. He is a huge fan favorite character character of mine, so I was really excited to be able to design him and put him into the game. Now, while in alt mode, again, following the same stats across the board and the same stealth across the board, but it does say that when you flip to this mode, your opponent chooses one of their upgrades and scraps it. So you get a built-in smelt with the transform, which is really powerful, especially if you can play another removal on the same turn, you're going to be able to really wipe out your opponent's upgrades on this side of the table. He's obviously the demolition expert. He's going to be blowing something up, so got to have an upgrade getting destroyed. Then we flip over into his bot mode. It does say that when this attacks, you may scrap a blue card from your hand. If you do, it gets plus three attack until end of turn. Now, Rumble is obviously a brawler, man. That guy is getting in there. He is beating up some of the big bots. So I wanted him to be able to have that same ability when it did come to getting in for an attack. And obviously, we're in a blue list. So I wanted to go with a leap into battle effect, getting that plus three attack. And now it is until end of turn, which is also really spicy. So if you can figure out a way to get an untap on him, you can really keep pushing pushing the damage with him. Again, just a really good brawler. Doesn't have a lot of health, which is just how it should be, but getting in for some serious damage when he needs to. And then again, just kind of giving a little bit of a buff to the sound wave when it does come to that, as well as just trying to make sure that these cards are again, gonna be good and playable. Now the next few that we're going to be talking about is going to be battle cards, and the first one coming in here is Aerial Superiority. Now this was a very, very fun card for me to design. I really wanted to give some helicopter and spaceship support, so I really wanted to kind of go with this aerial ability, and I ended up settling on giving access to all of the flying vehicles are going to be getting uh, these bonuses, whether it's a helicopter, plane, or spaceship. Now the way that this card does read, it says choose one of your characters if it's a helicopter, plane, or spaceship, and attacks a character that is a car, truck, or or tank, that character gets plus four attack and pierce four until end of turn. Now the main point behind this was to obviously really showcase that we're flying in, we're in a flying vehicle and we're going into a ground vehicle so we have that aerial superiority. Really powerful stuff and again I really wanted some helicopters and some spaceships to get some more support with our wave. Obviously since we do have two new helicopters coming in with this wave ourselves, I really wanted there to be that. Now obviously planes do have some support, however it's not really the greatest support so I really wanted to make sure that they were also included in this and plus you can't have one air vehicle out of when it's on against all of the air vehicles that'd be weird so i really wanted to really push that and getting those specific pieces a really really nice buff with this wave the next thing that I wanted to do with this was make sure that it obviously made a lot of sense. There's a lot of comparison cards that you can look at out there, bigger they are, heavy handed, that do have those requirements as well. However, their requirements are a lot lower. So before you just look at this card and go, oh man, this just seems absolutely insanely powerful, plus four, pierce four, that's ridiculous. There are a lot of requirements that you do have to 
meet in order to get this. First off, it is a blank battle icon card, so you're not getting access to anything when it comes to combat, defense, or attack as far as a pip goes, so that obviously does really hurt. And then the next thing is that it does have to be a character in alt mode attacking, obviously plane, helicopter, spaceship, going into a character also in alt mode that is also a car truck or tank. So it is very, very specific. There are a few hoops you have to jump through. However, it is going to be a really powerful card if you can get it to land, which again is why it is a blank battle icon card. Plus four, pierce four is really, really nice. And when you look at a lot of the other ones, it's plus two, pierce four. Sometimes you end up getting in for like pierce eight, but you're only swinging in for five. So it was really, really awkward when it came down to those. So I wanted to make sure that this did match specifically. So hopefully you're getting in for the same number of attack as you are pierce. The next card coming in here is going to be Twisted Logic. Now this is a secret action. Again, a really, really fun thing that I love in the game is secret action, so I really want to make sure that I did put a couple in. And we do have a white battle icon with this, which is also really exciting. A lot of secret actions that I'm getting put into blue or orange, and then they're kind of weird or black, and they're very, very specific. This one has the ability to be get put really into any deck, which is the one thing that I truly, truly wanted to do with this, because it is a very combat-specific secret action. So the white battle icon, means you can put it into any deck you want, helping you out on attack and or defense. Now the secret action reads, when one of your characters defends, you reveal the top five cards of your opponent's deck and you get to put them back in any order. Now this has a lot of things that you can really do with this secret action. Now, for those of you who are curious, this does proc the same way that it's going to do for other secret actions. Obviously, so your opponent's going to declare their attack. Boom. This is then going to proc. You're going to flip it over. You get to look at the top five of your opponent's deck. And you get to put them back in any order. So if your opponent did any weird type of planning, you know, they put those double oranges on top of their deck. Or if, you know, they put those double blacks on top of their deck to get in for big pierce, you can easily put them at the bottom of those five piles, uh, the bottom five cards. The number one reason why I decided to go with five is because in case there is a white battle icon in there, you can still choose to bury that fifth card as far down as you possibly can to where your opponent, unless they have crazy bold, aren't going to be getting it, which was very, very relevant again. Also, if you know you saw that, like let's say the third card from the top of the deck is something your opponent would have drawn or whatever else from a proc or an ability, then again, you can bury that card so your opponent can't draw it. So there's a lot of things that you can really do to set this up, whether you're going up against a heavy orange deck, again, really stacking those oranges, or if again, it's a heavy blue deck that's stacking those double blacks or whatever else the case is, you can really, really manipulate it when it comes to you defending to make sure that your defense is going to be in a better spot. One thing that I wanted to do with this wave with the cards that I have the ability to design was to try to help blue decks, defensive decks, a little bit more, given the fact that there is the meta. Now, you are going to see that in some of the cards, you know, throughout the entire arcs of release, and then you're obviously going to see some of the ones that are still going to be on that aggressive side. We only produce cards that only go for defensive decks. We really wanted to make sure that we filled the meta and all the archetypes as best as we could with what we could. There is obviously going to be a lot of playtesting that you guys are going to do that are going to go far beyond the playtesting that we could have done, so it's going to be really interesting and exciting to see what you guys come up with. Now the next card coming in is going to be Energon Sword, and this is probably one of my favorite cards that is going to be coming out with the Arc Wave as far as battle card goes. It is an absolutely amazing card, and there are so many applications for this card coming out. First off, it is a blue battle icon card. Mm -mm -mm, gimme, gimme, gimme. It is an upgrade weapon and put on melee characters only. Melee characters are a specific type of character that have gotten a lot less attention um, just from the melee aspect themselves. Obviously, there's tons of melee characters that get play. However, there isn't a lot of support for those melee characters. Uh, you're going to see, you know, lower end for melee and for specialists. And you're obviously going to see a lot of support for range characters. Um, you know, you definitely have like wedge formation and you have power sword, which are four melee characters. However, wedge formation is mainly used for other reasons. The heal one is nice. Um, and then power sword really just doesn't get much play. However, this one is going to get an insane amount of play. Now, the rest of the card says, when the upgraded character attacks and you flip at least blue, blue, the defender's base becomes zero during this battle and then does give plus one attack. Now, making your opponent's defense become zero is extremely relevant in a blue matchup. Or even if you're just a blue deck going up against another orange deck, those extra couple of points of damage make a huge, huge difference. Now, we already saw Taraxodon did something similar to this in its battle master form. As long as you flipped white, white, you got to do this. However, I really want to again push the blue and be able to have it be required for blue blue so people also can't cheekily get this out there using belligerence or using whatever else you do have to flip double blues. 
Again, talking about reducing the base to zero being so important, it just truly, truly is. I wanted to give more power to those blue decks that are really struggling, trying to finish and obviously going down really quickly because of all of the Pierce and all of the other jazz going around that I wanted this to be able to give a benefit to those characters to really help push the game over the edge on the blue side of things. Believe me, if your opponent doesn't have that two armor, that three armor in a blue matchup, this card becomes extremely powerful to just give you plus four attack essentially. It could also even just going against an orange deck be just that extra bit of damage, whether it's one, whether it's two, to be able to help finish off those characters to reduce your opponent's attacks to again help you in the long term of the game. It is really, really crazy. There are an insane amount of characters that are really going to want to be able to get this Energon sword. And if you are curious if you can sneak it into play on a melee character that's in one mode and you know range in another mode you totally can i encourage it and i will also say i've been having an insane amount of fun with wave one wheeljack with this card obviously i'm not going to go into too much into details with that because again i want you guys to really go out there and explore stuff but i'll tell you what i've been having an insane amount of fun playing with this card wheeljack but you guys are going to be seeing this energon sword a lot and it is really really good card and i absolutely love it Alrighty, so there's our first breakdown on just a few of the cards that I did get to design for the Arc Wave 1. Again, there are going to be multiple versions of these, especially once I can sit down with Wes. We can talk about a lot of the cards that he did design as well, so make sure you guys look forward to that. Make sure you guys look forward to, obviously, everything Arc-related coming out on October 30th. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Obviously, if you guys did, a like would be greatly appreciated. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys can access to everything as soon as it becomes available, and I will catch you guys in the next one.